Fellow Malawians, a few hours ago, I relayed a message to His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa, condemning the despicable behavior of a group of Malawians who have been expelled from South Africa for abusing their diplomatic privileges. I assured him that the conduct of these individuals does not represent the values of my administration and the Malawian people, nor does it reflect the cordial and warm bilateral relations between our two countries. In the meantime, I am pleased to report that even before this unfortunate incident, all the bad apples in our foreign missions had already been served with letters of recall to come back home. Additionally, the professionals whom my administration is sending to replace them have been identified, and confirmations by Parliament's Public Appointments Committee are already underway. I expect those we have chosen to deploy as Malawi's representatives around the world will do this country proud by the integrity of their conduct. The selection process we have concluded has been thorough, legal, meticulous, and objective, prioritizing our national interests which is a departure from the past practice of filling our embassies with cronies sent without due process or due diligence. As such, I assure you all that the stain that has been brought on our country by these undeserving and unprofessional individuals will soon be a thing of the past. I also expect that upon their arrival, they will be kept very far away from our foreign service. The Minister of Foreign Affairs will be addressing you all soon to shed more light on these matters. God bless Malawi. President Buhari, Nigeria has a very young population. Perhaps you might highlight what a pathway for a resilient future looks like. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I share the sentiment expressed by the Secretary General that the world is on the verge of climate catastrophe. Undeniably, climate change is a human-induced phenomenon. It is now imperative that we must step up our collective climate actions in line with the request of the Secretary General. It is in this regard that I wish to reiterate Nigeria's commitment to its obligation under the Paris Agreement, the aspirations enshrined in our national determined contribution, and to ensure a resilient future that mainstream climate risks is our decision making. I want to announce that the government of Nigeria will develop a more robust sectorial action plan and expand the scope of our sovereign green bonds in line with our intended upward review of Nigeria's NDCs towards the inclusion of the water and waste section by 2020. We will take concrete steps to harness climate innovative ideas by including youth in decision-making processes as part of our overall climate governance architecture. We will mobilize Nigerian youth towards planting 25 million trees to enhance Nigeria's carbon sink. In the energy sector, Nigeria is presently diversifying its energy sources from dependence on gas-powered system to hydro, solar, wind, biomass, and nuclear sources. Specifically, Nigeria is progressively working 
to realize 30% energy efficiency and renewable energy mix by 2030. This is envisaged to lead to 179 million tons of carbon, of carbon dioxide reduction per annum by 2030. I should also inform the summit that our government has introduced climate smart agricultural practices to unlock 74 million tons of carbon dioxide per annum through relevant technologies, advocacy, and best practices. As you are aware, the Lake Chad Basin, which used to be a region of productivity, food security, and wealth for an estimated 40 million citizens living around the Lake Basin, has shrunk significantly from its original size due to climate change. We will continue to lead in efforts to have solid partnership for the ecological restoration and recharge of the Lake Chad. We are confident that this would improve the living conditions of diverse nationals living in the area, promote interstate cooperation, strengthen community resilience, as well as assist in addressing the environmental and security crisis that threaten the region, its resources, and inhabitants. I'm glad the Secretary General and some of the member states presented in this hall are partnering with us in this endeavor. We shall thank them for their cooperation, and I look forward to deepen our partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. The Netherlands are doing a lot on adaptation and resilience.